So yeah, I'm here about to tell you about writing libraries and why it's terrible. And I've been basically working full time on a library a which, uh, for about the last year and a half, so I've got to experience all this firsthand. Uh, some caveats. I'm talking spe about my specific experience, so I'm talking about writing open source libraries. Uh, closed source proprietary libraries uh, do exist. I have no experience with this at the moment, and my impression is that using those is terrible. So uh, this is what, what the other end feels like. I'm also talking uh, specifically about my experience writing a Python library. I think very little of what I have to say is actually about Python or Python specific, but that does color the exp experiences. Different languages have different communities who respond differently. Um, now, despite the title, I actually really like writing libraries. Uh, you get to focus on a very constrained problem. You get to do some, you know, a lot of interesting things in the course of doing them. There is really a lot to recommend writing libraries. and. Uh, the process of writing them is enlightening and enjoyable. But then people start using them, and that, that, that's where things start to go a bit wrong. <laughs> um, this was originally going to be a talk full of technical war stories, and I'm really glad it no longer is, because Jim completely topped any technical war stories I can give you. <laughs> um, but I, I am going to start by just mentioning like the single biggest technical problem that gives me a headache as a library author. Um, which is that I currently support three operating systems officially, and really dropping any one of these is completely non-optional. Um, and on top of that, I have to support a really large number of versions of Python. And even with the ones I support, people complain about uh, the ones I don't support. So apparently it's really annoying that I don't support Python 2.6, despite the fact that Python 2.6 has been end of life for a large number of years. Um, and in general, Everyone's computer is different, and as an application developer, uh, you have to deal with this. And it turns out that as a library developer, you have to deal with this more, because you don't just have to worry about what's on their computer. You have to worry about the specific versions of different things. If you're writing an application, you can ship a language runtime with it and not really care which version they already have. There are all sorts of advantages. I don't get any of those. OK, that's all I want to say on the technical side of things, because it turns out that none of these are actually the really bad thing about writing libraries. Uh, the really bad thing about writing libraries is money, um, because culturally, we've just moved to this idea that, of course, libraries are things we get for free. Um, like I said, open, no, open source or libraries are great to use, so of course everyone is using open source libraries. And you do get paid for open source projects. Like, um, a lot of the uh, big ones in particular are very well paid these days. Most people who work on Linux are uh, paid to do so. But a lot of the open source ecosystem isn't this sort of, of large open source project. It's these single serving libraries that do one, th one specific thing and people just install them. They don't even really, really think about paying for them. And this is obviously a problem. Uh, and what they pay for them instead is complaining. Um, <laughs> if uh, like I said, people complain to me for not supporting Python 2.6, and I get some really entitled comments about that. They're basically just like, um, I'm, I'm a giant bank building legacy software in Python 2.6, um, making lots of money. Why aren't you uh, supporting this thing that I need for my for-profit business for free? Um, and, and this isn't much fun to be on the receiving end of, obviously. Um, and uh, it, it turns out to be quite hard to pay your bills with other people's whining. Um, but actually, none of this is the worst part about not getting any money to work on these. Uh, what the, um, because it turns out that as well as sort of being intrinsically useful, um, being paid for your work gives you lots of advantages that not being paid for your work doesn't have. Um, one of the biggest, I think, underappreciated advantages of making money is that it gives you an amazingly good decision heuristic. Whenever you come to a choice, uh, assuming it, like, and you've got a choice where uh, you've sort of crossed, you know, crossed off all the other objections, like you're ethically okay with both options, both options uh, seem like good ideas, so on and so forth, which one of them is going to make you more money? Um, and so do I, you know, do I support this obscure version of Python? Well, am I going to make more money than it costs me in effort to support this version of Python? Um, and in the course of design, there are um, a million choices you can make in all these. And basically, with open source, 
And with this sort of library, all that really guides your choice is, do I feel like doing it? And will I feel bad about not supporting this? And this turns out, if you're like me, to be a great way of creating an amazingly large amount of work for yourself. And it's really, a, really not obvious which of the work is important and which of the work is not important. Uh, the other great thing about money is that you can hire people. And I do get, you do get contributions as an open source library. I, um, my project hypothesis, I have absolutely got contributions from people, and it's great. But there's sort of, this is the amount of hypothesis I've done. This is the amount of hypothesis literally everyone else has done. And I don't hold that against them. Why should they? I'm not paying them. Um, and, basic, and basically, uh, everything they, give, they do for hypothesis is a gift. And so I'm very grateful to those gifts. But at the same time, um, it's still just me doing most of, most of this work. And what that means is if I have to be a lot of people, if you think about your normal software projects, you don't just have developers. Um, you, don't, you certainly don't just have one developer. That would be ridiculous. Why would you do that? I mean, you've got no redundancy there, right? But you've also got project managers. You've got customer support people. You've got sales. You've got marketing. You've got technical writing. You've got QA. I have to be all of those people. And in some ways, this is a good thing. Like I've really enjoyed learning a lot of these. And the best way to get a lot of appreciation for your colleagues is to try and do their jobs and discover that all of the things that you thought were really easy and that your colleagues were kind of idiots and just making a big deal of it, it turns out that actually people have specialized skills and some of those specialized skills are really hard. I've been doing a lot of attempts at marketing recently and it turns out that maybe those marketers did actually know something. Uh, this, is not, this is not an opinion I would have had a year ago. Um, but, but at the same time, um, this is really bad because I'm not good at marketing and I'm doing a marketing for this project. I'm, I'm okay at writing. Well, I'm, I think I'm good at writing, but I'm not good at technical writing. Documentation, it turns out, is um, an entire new skill on top of both technical understanding and writing. So I'm having to learn all of these because I don't really have another way to do it. Um, and I certainly can't afford to pay anyone else to do it. Um, and this is all this is all a NASA problem, and this isn't going to change. Because from the point of view of the people using our work, um, what we are basically doing is giving them money. We're just le saying, um, we're leaving this giant pa pile of cash on the ground, where, and they're just coming on and picking it up, because someone's left this giant pile of cash. And obviously, that means it's free for use, right? Um, if someone tells you, uh, that there is this thing that is better than pay and the thing you're going to pay for, and you can get it for free, um, then, of course, you're going to take it. Um, so the only way this can actually change is, oh, sorry, and, and this is very short-term thinking. Like, um, as we saw in the lightning talk about CentOS yesterday, um, this will bite you, but by the time it's bitten you, uh, we've already done all the work, and it's probably too late, and so, um, regardless of what a bad decision this may or may not be on the company's side, that doesn't actually help me. And it doesn't help the other, and this isn't just about me, obviously. This is about everyone else who finds themselves in, their posi in this position. But in particular, it's about me. Uh, this doesn't help me. Um, and so there's really only one, way, one side this can change from, which is, no, which is my side and our side. And at some point, we are just going to have to start withdrawing our labor. Uh, like if the problem is that people are taking our work and using it for free and that this is really bad for us, maybe we could just stop giving our work away for free. Is that, is that a valid pl a plan? It seems like a valid plan. Every time I uh, try and explain my situation to my family, they look at me like I'm crazy and ask me why I'm giving away stuff for free. Um, and I feel sad about this. I really like sharing my work. I'm not writing open source software because I want to make lots of money. Um, I, my judgment isn't quite that bad. Um, I'm writing open source software because I want people to use it, and I want to share these ideas, and I really enjoy doing it. So what I'm really hoping is that there's some compromise we can do here. And software licensing is a large part, large part of this. I don't know what part the GPL necessarily has to play in any eventual solution, but I do know that the MIT and BSD licenses have nothing to play in this solution. They can go to hell as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Um, and 
I think there's more scope for improving the situation with licensing, and I don't know yet what that's going to be. Um, I am talking to people to find out what that's going to be. Um, because ultimately, I think we do need to give people a better way to pay us, and we do need to give, still have ways of giving things away for free, and I don't know where the middle ground is. But despite my very adversarial framing of this as us versus them, I don't think us versus them is the solution either, because I like my, and uh, as well as sharing, I also like making money, and I'm perfectly happy for other people to make money, and I think working together is the only way we can move forward. We have to start this, but we can't finish this alone. Um, and ultimately, I think as well as being better for us open source developers, it's also going to be better for customers, for companies. Because when you think about it, 90% of the code you're running in production has this label on it. And that's probably a bad idea. Thank you very much. Any questions? I have various plans. Right now, mostly I'm doing uh, services and training. Um, I'm going to be starting offering proprietary extensions as well, which try and make it easy to use the core libraries for everyone. But when you start to have problems, that you only really have problems if you are a, company, a large company who's doing serious deployments of these things, then you need to start paying me money. And there are a variety of other plans. I'm happy to talk about that at greater length afterwards. but. But the short answer is it's really hard, and no one seems to have a very successful plan yet. Uh, like the best plan seems to be to do a really bad job of writing a library and then get people to pay you to help them figure it out. <laughs> and I'm not a big fan of that plan either. <laughs> Question over there? Um, so for about the last six months, a lot of the issues and feature requests on uh, my GitHub tracker have had the tag for a modest fee on them. Literally no one has ever approached me about this. Um, I do have a bounty source account, which I need to make more obvious, but I, um, I currently get some money from donations on that and zero money on issues. So this, this works very well for some people, but I think it tends to, there's this general pattern where Applications with lots of consumer usage um, do quite well on these bounty programs more than uh, things with companies using them. For example, I know NeoVim seems to be doing very well at the bounty source right now. Um, and I think it's again the thing where, um, well, that's an error, where large open source applications work much better than these sort of, for this for these small libraries. but. That's probably a, that is probably part of a, a viable future. I just don't know what part it is, and it doesn't hasn't been working for me so far. Do you feel you should be paying for Python and the standard library is part of Python? Um, well, right now I'm not a successful commercial open so, uh, uh, no, commercial user of it. Um, I kind of do, though. Yeah, I think certainly in terms of donating to the Python Software Foundation. Uh, that's something I will probably do once my revenue stream starts to look a little less pitiful and once I actually start paying myself again. <laughs> um, but, um, but it's hard. Uh, there's this huge ecosystem of open source and I don't know, yet know where the money it should come from in this, but I do feel that a lot more of it should come from the people who are making literally billions of dollars running off it than necessarily uh, the individual developers who are building on top of it. Um, but, but yes, it's compli complex. I don't know the answer. Rob? Do you have ideas addressing the problem that developers are generally not buyers? Um, not really. I call this the take me to your leader problem. Um, the take me to your leader problem, right. uh, which is that basically the only solution I can figure out is that you need to get developers to introduce you to their managers. but. That runs into the developers are also not marketers problem because basically you're trying to turn devel developers into your marketers and we're not very good at that. Yeah, that's the point. You've got to be able to serve all that knowledge about fundraising, fundraising 
Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I think there does need to be more, better charitable organizations for supporting open source, but I think I'm not necessarily the person to come up with the ideas around that or to try that. Uh, another question from Rob? The Python Software Foundation have very specific funding policies, which is that you can apply, for, apply to them for funding to work on a specific isolated chunk of work. Uh, so if there were a feature I wanted to add to Hypothesis, then at that I wanted funding for, I could potentially apply to the PSF for it. Uh, but for the general problem of ongoing Hypothesis development, that's not the sort of thing they fund, and so I've largely not looked into it past that point. But for certain things, that's absolutely a thing people should think about doing. Um, and also, there are, within specific areas, there are, more, uh, there are other funding bodies for this. So for example, for Django, there's the Django Foundation who can do this. There's NumFocus, who tend to focus on scientific um, Python, and a bunch of related things. So sometimes, you can, sometimes that works, but it tends to be more problem, more solution to specific problems than the on, to the general larger problem. Anyone else? Are you going to write up the book on Lean Python? Yes, I'm going to look into that because I'm I've already written a huge number of articles, and so I figure um, I can turn those articles into a book. But um, that's more marketing than it is going to be necessarily a useful income stream. Like I'm expecting, to, I'm expecting that to make some money. And also, this is sort of the solution that only works once you've already put in all this work and sort of done all this free work. So again, I think writing books is it's a great partial solution to this problem, but it doesn't actually solve the problem. And maybe, that maybe with all the partial solutions available, if you do literally all of them, it starts to add up to a whole solution. But right now, I'm not convinced it does. Is, is open source possibly the wrong answer for this? Um, is, and is, or is it just a marketing strategy? Um, I don't know if open source is the wrong answer. I think that closed source is definitely the wrong answer. And I think finding some hybrid between the two but as we saw in Jim's talk earlier and in plenty of others, uh, there's a reason why open source is so popular. And it's not just that, we're given, no, that stuff's being given away for free. Uh, your life tends to get very bad if you build your, your things on the foundation of other people's closed source products. Um, and this sort of free sharing of ideas really does have a lot of benefits. So I don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. I really like open source and want it to succeed. And um, and this, that's why I'm trying to find a, car, a compromise. Uh, in terms of the question of whether it's marketing or not, um, marketing is definitely a component. But I, I think we need more than just marketing. I don't think if you, I think no matter how well you market your open source product, that's not going to make you any money unless you also have a path into making money from it, which is what I'm trying to figure out. So I was trying to sort of say that the open source product could be the marketing for the. It is the market, something else. Yeah. Um, so that that is sort of that is the open source core model, or something, like, or something like that. And I think that's a viable solution. But you do then end up in a, in that case, you're sort of asking yourself, how much of the benefits of open source do I want to get? And I would like something where you can get both the benefits of open source and the benefits of uh, commercial work. I would also like a pony. <laughs> um, <more time. laughs>